it's a bright, beautiful Houston, Texas day. And we have a flat tire. So that's great. There's your problem. Well, hello, Mr. Ant. All right, well, now that we got that catastrophe out of the way, it's time to get some work done. I also have some goodies here from the house that never got moved. Now they're here and they will be filed in the junk corner next to Caleb's desk. But regardless, we know today is going to be a good day because we're about to try something we've never done before and it legitimately kind of scares us a bit. Brucey, where's your ball? Go get your ball. Go get it. Now we wait. 12 seconds later. Oh, good boy. It's a big risk because we don't know if it's gonna work. Our little cutting and charcuterie board business has sort of hit its limit in its current form. And we've got to try something radically different. We've got a huge opportunity this holiday season to turn the business into something bigger and better. I mean, we didn't go through everything we've gone through just so we could give up right at the start of the next chapter of our business. We have to take this next step in our business because we can't lose. It's literally all upside for us. We were never supposed to start a furniture business. It's it's kind of all gravy. Oh, I touched the grease. But it's all gravy for us. Like we never meant to be entrepreneurs. So every dollar we make in the business is a dollar we never expected to make in the first place. We started our adult lives as officers in the Air Force. After we graduated college with weather degrees, we commissioned and we were stationed in Minot, North Dakota. I was doing nuclear missiles and Jenny was forecasting weather for the B-52s. About the furthest jobs from entrepreneurship you can possibly imagine. And while we were stationed in North Dakota, we were battling the cold and boredom. Because I don't know if you know, there's not a whole lot to do if you've looked at a map of Minot, North Dakota. We also thought that we were gonna be there a while so we bought a house and started filling it with furniture until I realized how expensive furniture was and I learned I could probably make it myself. So I was learning how to build furniture in our garage and Jenny was learning how to help. Piece by piece, we started building furniture to put in our big empty house. And our friends started noticing that we were building pieces of furniture and they liked them and wanted to know if they could have some too. And for a while, I just built stuff at cost. But every time we got a piece of furniture or a new job, we kept charging more money and charging more money. So then we realized we we could actually make a legitimate business out of this. I mean, we made about $35,000 in six months just selling stuff in our free time. There was so much potential in just building and selling furniture out of our little garage. Bruce, come here. Bruce, what did you contribute when we were starting the business? Bruce was there. He was a little puppy at the time. What did you contribute? Bruce handled quality control. He's a little humble. He doesn't like talking about it, but he was really good at making sure everything was up to standards before it left the shop. See, now he's embarrassed. So Jenny's got to call her tire is fixed. So we got to go pick up her car and we also need to go to Target and get desks. desks. Because you just hired a new salesperson. Yes. And they need a desk. Who's the new salesperson? Well, you're going to have to subscribe and find out. Where are my keys? Oops. Keys, let's go. Be good, don't throw any parties. Don't poop on the floor. Do you see that look? He's gonna poop on the floor. We'll be back in about an hour. I forgot my sunglasses, can I have yours? <sighs> yes. Ah! Anyway, all the while we were filming and uploading videos of what we were doing onto YouTube in hopes that other makers out there that were looking to build a business or try to sell what they make would have maybe some help or advice or at least be able to watch what we were doing. So as we were starting these two businesses, he was working 80 hours a week and I was working 60 hours a week in the Air Force. So we were starting to think, why would we stick around for military careers if we could start our own businesses that would make us more money allow us to live where we wanted to live and have fun doing it. And enjoy our work. <laughs> that one. I'm not bitter, you're <laughs> bitter.
Okay, we hate this desk now. Found a better one for cheaper that looks a little better. How many do we want? Four or five? Three? What a buzzkill. And then one day, Jenny gets an email that she got by mistake. And it was advertising a new job opportunity for the hurricane hunters. What are you laughing at? You just... You're laughing at the way I'm carrying the box? Yes. That's inappropriate. Jenny's informed me that it's time for lunch. It is. Which is Jenny's very polite way of telling me that I'm getting pissy and snippy and angry. It's called hangry. Do you get hangry? Everybody gets hangry. What's for lunch today? Fish. Ugh. Fried fish. Listen to that sizzly fishy. How do I get this out? Do we have pot holders? No. How do we do this? Pliers? A shop full of tools. Get some pliers. Tool. Okay, I'll get pliers. Don't try this at home. Nailed it. All right, now that I've eaten something and the world seems like a happier place, it's time to assemble these desks. So if you don't know, the Air Force has a unit that flies C-130s through the middle of hurricanes for research. They also help the National Hurricane Center forecast these storms before they make landfall. This was secretly our dream job, but we had no knowledge of the unit and we just assumed that it was never gonna work out for us. It just wasn't in the cards for us. So we were pretty intimidated by the fact that Jenny got this email. I mean, we weren't even considering applying for these jobs, but you know, we talked about it and uh, a couple drinks later, we decided that we were gonna make them tell us no. We weren't gonna say no to the opportunity ourselves. So we called the chief meteorologist of the unit and asked if we would be wasting their time by coming down and interviewing for these positions. Because Davis wasn't even a weather officer in the Air Force. So we would have to be completely retrained. And to our surprise, she said, no, please come down and interview. We could really use the help. So we went down to Mississippi, we interviewed for the jobs, and we were both offered positions. But these jobs had a catch. They were part-time during hurricane season only. So they weren't full-time gigs like we were used to with everything that usually comes with a full-time job. But lucky for us, we had two baby businesses that needed a lot of attention and we were quite frankly sick of the full-time requirements of the military. If we took these jobs, it would put our lives on a completely different trajectory. And because of that, we were a little terrified. This new life was calling us but we knew it was also gonna be a lot more work and there's quite a bit more risk involved. But in hindsight, it was a match made in heaven, quite literally. We took the leap of faith and we decided to grow our two businesses while we were flying through hurricanes part-time. So it's done. Look at it, doesn't that look nice? A nice sturdy $60 disc. So we packed everything we owned into a trailer and moved to Houston. Fast forward to today and we've got a lot going on with our businesses. They're both growing really fast. This year we moved out of our garage and into this commercial shop space with an office. We also had 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. We've hired several employees and we've sold $53,000 worth of cutting boards just this year so far. And although it has not been easy, it has been so much fun. This journey has been nothing but a blessing of both personal growth as well as giving back to the community as a business. But today marks a turning point and everybody loves it when I do this. We have a new challenge ahead that's either gonna make or break both of our businesses. The 2022 holiday season. The holiday season has already started. I know it seems super far away, but it's basically already here. And fortunately for us, we have a business building the best gifts in the whole wide world. They're handmade cutting and charcuterie boards that are engraved 
gift wrapped and shipped right to the recipient's door. But there are a few things working against us. We're facing an impending recession. We're probably gonna have more customers this year than we ever had before, which means we're gonna have to build more boards than we've ever built before. We're definitely gonna have to hire some more help. We're gonna screw up, we're gonna laugh, we're gonna cry, we have a lot of stuff to do, and you're gonna be here for all of it. The mission we've chosen to accept with the 2022 holiday season has two directives. The first one, turn nobody away. Jenny's trying to build a sales team and we need to be able to turn no one away if they wanna use our boards as gifts this holiday season. We should not be the reason that somebody does not buy or is not able to purchase boards. And the second side of that is the hard part, is we wanna deliver everything on time before Christmas. Everything. That's how we're gonna measure success during this holiday season, is if we didn't turn anyone away and if we delivered everything on time. And hopefully by the end of the holiday season, we'll be much closer to our goal that you heard a few weeks ago of selling 700 boards a month. Then after that, we can start building and selling tables. So we don't know what's gonna happen in the next few months. We don't know who we're gonna hire. We don't know how many boards we're gonna sell. We don't know how much money we're gonna make, but we know how it's gonna happen. We're gonna follow our fears with a smile on our face and faith that it's all gonna work out okay. Because we only get one life. This is where we were put to grow and give back to others. And we're determined to make the most of it. Time and time again, we've learned that the life you're meant to live is where you're afraid to go. So no matter what we do, we have to follow our fears.